Hey everybody, Jason here. So today's, I don't know what day it is. Today is the end of the first week of April. It's about minus two or three degrees out. We're getting snow right now and overnight. And today we've had about 10 centimeters. So it's not a lot of snow, but it's a half decent amount. And it seems like a lot because all the snow had melted off. So now we have snow again. Um, plan for the day, get out to camp. Still have to hike in, so I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna see what I can do for camp improvements. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching these videos, you know, I've done a lot of building out there and most of it has been uh, like temporary solutions. So my original plan was get out there and fix up some of the stuff, make it better. And that still is the plan, but now with the 10 centimeters of snow, basically I'm back in winter and yeah, we'll see what I can do. I also have an idea. So I've got a cooking experiment. You know, truth be known, my camp cooking sucks. I'm quite a good cook at home, but yeah, you know, I don't know if it's just the, I don't know, I burn things. So I've got an idea and yeah, hopefully we'll see if it works. So yeah, time to get to camp. Okay, well, the uh, the hike was kind of weird, actually, coming out here today. The, the bush is starting to change. So I think what it might be is just from all the snow over winter weighing down all the, you know, the young growth that, you know, now it the snow's gone and, you know, all of that just little, you know, two-foot trees and three-foot trees, they're all standing up again. So it's just a little bit more bushy. Um, I was a little bit concerned getting out here, but uh, camp is good. The uh, The reason I was concerned is just that uh, the day I went on that Bruce Trail hike, the, or the day I was leaving from the Bruce Trail hike, they were calling for rain, and when I was driving home, it did start up, and there was uh, severe wind warnings and some really strong gusty winds. So I was concerned that there'd be some damage out here, but aside from seeing a few trees down here and there hiking in, it's not bad and definitely camp is pretty much the way I left it so it's good there's a it's also interesting that coming out here after not being here for two weeks it's nice you know it's like I don't know it's like returning home that kind of feeling you know when you're away for a week or something and you get home and you have that ah familiarity kind of feeling it's yeah I guess it's my camp, so pretty cool. Anyhow, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna work on making the fire reflector better. But before I do that, I'm going to gather up my tinder and my kindling. So I better get to it.
Okay, well, you can see the fire reflector that I have right now. You can see there's a big gap, you know, up near the top. I've got two poles and then the gap. When I built it, I built the lower section and, uh, you know, it was, it was freezing cold out and I wanted to reflect, you know, some of the heat back. I knew that it had to be more than that, but, you know, that's what I got done. And, uh, you know, for that day, it was good enough. And then later on, the next time I was out, I think, you know, I gathered up a couple other poles and threw them on top when I was doing firewood. So basically what I want to do now is I just want to take off those two poles, untie the stakes and, uh, you know, just reassemble it, you know, so that I don't have this huge gap in the middle. Um, I would, you know, it's unfortunate that it's snowing again because I would ideally like to straighten it all out as well. Um, you know, with the, having the ground been frozen and then thawed and gone to, you know, muddy, um, it is leaning slightly back, but like not too much. I'm not going to be too worried about it right now. It's probably got like a five degree lean or something, you know, it'd probably stay standing forever. Um, but you know, later on I'll straighten it out. So yeah, so disassembly time. Okay, well, that should do it. So, what is that? It's three feet high now. Um, 
which it was before, but now there's no huge gap in the middle. And uh, yeah, more than anything, it just, now it looks nice. <laughs> so, which is kind of silly, but you know, when you work away at something, building a camp, and you see things, you know, that just aren't right, you know, big gap in the middle of fire reflector, and you have a lot of fires, yeah, that's something that you have to deal with. So, yeah, it's one thing down, so that's good. So, I'm gonna get this fire going, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see if this idea of mine works. So I just want to get uh, everything ready. So I'm just breaking up some uh, some kindling right now, so I can just lay it next to where I'm going to start the fire. That way I'm not, you know, fiddling around later on trying to find sticks to add to it. I don't have to break all this up, but you know, as long as I have enough for the first couple minutes then the fire should be good and I can just break it as I go. So then the what I found is the best thing is to just uh, lay your kindling right next to your tinder bundle. That way it's right there. Okay, so what I've got is some cedar bark and I kind of lucked out because I found a tree that uh, looked like an animal had used it as a scratching post. So a lot of this was just already loosely hung off and not only that, but the fibers are already, you know, like hairy. So that'll help out a lot. Um, and I also got uh, some birch and then I've got a, basically a plate, some dead, uh, what is it, it's ironwood bark. So it's just a tree, a dead standing tree, the bark was falling off, so I took that. So I'm gonna start my fire on that and then I'll move it into my fire pit. A lot easier, so uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get it going just with the cedar bark and uh, you know, test myself a little bit. It's a little bit harder than the birch bark. So, and then if I can't get it going with just the cedar bark, I'll add the birch bark and that should get it going, no worries.
Okay, well, got the fire going. Um, managed to get it going just with uh, some cedar bark there. Took a bit of effort, but uh, yeah, the more I broke up the fibers of the cedar bark, eventually it got enough of a, an ember going that I just, you know, just played with it, lightly blew on it, folded over, you know, more of the cedar bark on top and, you know, just very gradually built it up. Um, but anyhow, it's so it's going now and I've just got uh, some larger pieces on so I'm going to build up the coal so that I can uh, get cooking. So that leads me to the next thing, so my idea. Now, I'm not a horrible camp cook, but what I have difficulty with is any kind of baking. So anytime I make damper, it just it burns, you know? Um, damper. Uh, bannock. Anytime I make bannock, it burns. So, and not bad, but you know, like I get burn on it. So I'm trying to figure out a way to avoid that. In the past, one thing that I've done is I've taken, I've got a, my pot set and I actually have one pot larger than this, but I tend not to bring it. So I have these two um, and they just nest inside each other. So what I've done is I've put some water in a larger pot, put my dough in the smaller pot and then you know, nested them inside each other on the fire. So the water boils and it's within the heat, but the bottom of the pot never makes contact with, you know, the, the hot coals or anything like that. And now that's worked. So it's taken care of the, the burning, but the problem is it ties up a pot. So you do the one and then you have to set aside your, your bannock and then it sits there and you cook whatever else. I'd much rather be able to do, you know, all the cooking at one time without burning it. But then there's one other thing and it's the mess. I want to figure out a way to avoid, you know, the burnt stuff in the pot, the scraping and just the mess. So what I've come up with is to pack Let's see, is it in here or is it in the pack? Give me a second, it's in the pack. Okay, so what I've come up with is to pack some wax paper. All right, now what I like about it is, and actually before I get there, is I don't know if there's a difference between wax paper and parchment paper. This was parchment paper. I don't know, but I, to me it's the same thing. If it isn't, leave a comment and let me know what the difference is. But what I like about it is that it's super thin, it's paper, so when I'm done with it, I can just throw it in the fire and burn it. No worries. And, it, like it's so light, right? Like, this is, you know what I mean? Like that's packable. Um, it might be a bit of a cheat, you could call it a hack, but the main thing is I want to see if it works. So my idea is to line my pot that I'm going to use to cook bannock with the wax paper and put the dough inside and then cook it normally. And then I want to see if the paper burns completely, if the bannock burns, and yeah, what kind of mess is left afterwards, you know? So that's why I want to find out. So we're going to. So what I've got is I've got my my cook pot, right? So this is going to be one person bannock. Really, it's going to be enough for like really two servings, but. You know, I break the recipe in half and, you know, that's a lot of bread to eat in one go. But anyway, we'll see. So then what I'm going to do is, like if I open this up and I put it in a pot, right, it pops back out, right? 
So I'm gonna crumple it up. Like this. Okay. Get nice and crumpled. Now it's in the pot. Now just fold over the edges. Right? So now it sits in there. So now I just have to make up my batter, my dough, and uh, throw it in there. And we should be good to go. Alright, so I've got my pots. I've got my parchment paper inside my test pot and then I've got got my actual uh, damper bannock uh, mix here so let's see I'd like to leave myself notes in what I'm cooking so what is this? So it says single serving bannock, add quarter cup of water. And on the back, I've got, this is a half a cup of flour, and it's a whole wheat flour, plus a one teaspoon of baking powder, and a pinch of salt. So now you can add stuff in here, you can add whatever, you can add I've put in like even rosemary and stuff like that to make it, you know, more like a savory kind of uh, bread. Um, in fact, I think that one was uh, like rosemary and garlic powder, and that was really good. But like you can put in seeds, and I've put in flax seeds, and I've even thrown in like uh, like peanuts and like trail mix before. Um, so yeah, so you can add stuff to this, and uh, but this is just a basic one. You know, it's a test shot, so I want to see if it works before I fancy it up. So, so what I do is uh, I pack it just into a Ziploc bag, right? So these are freezer bags, um, so they're stronger. And what did I say? I'm gonna add a quarter cup of water. So I've got my quarter cup measuring cup that I always pack with me, and I'm gonna add the water right into the bag. Okay, so that was just shy of a quarter cup. Um, sometimes I've made it and I found that it's like goopy, you know, and then it cooks, especially when it burns on the outside, but uh, the inside is like really moist and uh, it almost has like a taste or whatever, not taste, sensation, feeling, you know, whatever. It's almost as if it's not cooked, so it's just very doughy. So I'm gonna try just a little bit less. I might have to add more, we'll see. But yeah, from here I just knead it right in the bag, right? Because it's super simple, and uh, this way my hands don't get all, you know, gunky, and then I have to wash my hands. And also, uh, you know, after working out here, you know, my hands, like, been wearing gloves so they're not bad but you know on some trips hands can get pretty filthy so don't really want those fingers in the food okay so I'll show you what this looks like Okay, so you can see it's just all getting mixed up right in the bag there. And by the looks of it, it looks like the, the dough mixture was spot on. Okay, so I've got my, my dough ball and uh, I'm just gonna stick it in the in the pot with the parchment paper, just kind of squish down a little bit. So 
stuff. Let's see. Right. Okay, and now with that done, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to fold, I'm not going to have the, the paper hanging out because that's obviously going to catch fire. So I'm actually going to just fold it over inside the pot. I'll throw my lid on it. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so that's just a small little piece of bread that I'm cooking, so I don't think it's going to take that long. Um, so I've brought along some Canadian bacon that I'm going to fire up to have with it. Well, there was quite a bit of smoke coming out of here when I opened it up, which is not good. Paper's burnt, but I knew that would happen. Actually, the top looks pretty good. Do not want to burn myself on the pot. But, you see, the top of it looks pretty good. Yeah, a little bit burnt on the bottom, but... That's not too bad at all. Actually, have a look inside. Hmm. That's pretty good. See, one other thing, it's just I wondered if it would save on cleaning up. There you go. So the pot is still clean, or relatively clean, cleaner. Nothing stuck to it. Got my paper, which I can just throw in the fire. And it does look like that bread that looks pretty good. All right, well, I did bring some butter because butter is a good safeguard. Everything's better with butter. So the bread isn't uh, that bad looking, really. It. Uh, here. 
It might be a little bit doughy, but but I think it's pretty good. I don't know if this will melt or not out here in the cold. You know, that's one benefit of coming out this time of year is, uh, you know, all the time in the summer, you know, it, you got to think about what can I pack out, you know, if you're packing bacon, how long will it last for, you know, if you, you know, geez, do you pack chicken, you know what I mean, like, so it's always the question of how long food's going to last in the heat, but, uh, double that up and see if it melts but this time of year you can pack pretty much anything that butter's still hard there we go Everything's kind of precarious. I got a lot of ice built up, so I don't want it to slide away on me. So I think that worked pretty good. Um, like there was another way that I've made it, and it was to basically make like an Indian chapati, uh, which is like a flatbread, and I brought out a uh, like cooking oil, olive oil, and just, you know, uh, fried it up. So, but this looks like it worked out pretty good. I just have to, uh, I gotta work on, you know, the distance of, like, where to place the pot, you know. It, uh, I actually moved it. It started off, I cleared a spot and put coals around it and some coals on top. But then I discovered that the bottom actually wasn't cooking very much, you know, for sure. It's because the ground's frozen. So, um, so I moved coals around and, you know, then moved it so the pot would be on top. And that's when, you know, the bottom burnt a little bit. But, yeah, not bad. I got, uh, basically bacon and biscuits. So, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I need to eat this up before it gets cold. It's too good to waste. Not that I'd waste it if it was cold. It's much better when it's warm. Okay, well, that definitely hit the spot. Filled me up a bit. I'm just going to relax out here for a while and uh, just enjoy the space. Just looking at it though, the, the fire reflector looks a lot better. I don't know if it performs any better, you know? Looks better though, so that's nice. Still, I'm going to finish off the shaving horse and then I'm gonna rebuild the saw horse a few other things get the chair built been saying that probably since like day one out here <laughs> I still haven't done it but you know priorities right I've got something to sit on and that's cool um, but some kind of you know seat or chair would be nice um, something just a little bit more comfortable, you know, something I can rest my back on. So,
yeah but we're just gonna relax so I think that's it for the day so yeah thanks for watching